All right, guys, here we go. 11.3, starting on page 277 down there. Talking about biodiversity loss and extinction. So no uh, sticky notes on here. But if you flip to 278, if I can get it on the screen here. Starting here, I'll zoom in a little bit more so you can see it too. So as humans move into an area, we tend to make it the same as other areas we come from. All right, that's a bad thing because obviously not every area in the world is the exact same way. And so we can't basically modify one area to what we're used to. So this makes for what basically winners and losers, which is up in 11.4, which I'll move up to now. So you can see characteristics of winning and losing species. So winners, they tend to be generalists, geographically widespread. So they can kind of like live in a whole bunch of different habitats. Yeah, you can see low on the food chain as well. So they're not really dependent on the whole food chain acting perfectly. All right, you can see some of the loser characteristics. They're specialists, so they eat certain type of things. They live in small sorts of ranges. They're high on the food chain. They're typically an island species. They need a large area of habitat to go through. So you can see here we got a picture. We got basically the mouse. Okay, rats are the same way. Those are scavengers. Raccoons can be the same thing. Tigers, okay, those guys are high up on the food chain. They need a large area of habitat to survive as well. So going back to the sticky note there. As biodiversity drops, there is also genetic diversity is declining as well, which is obviously a problem. And the geographic range, like we were just talking about with the tiger, that is also going to decline. All right. Now, one of the things that we talk about here in this chart here, which I like. So this chart, well, actually, I don't like it, but it's a good example of what's going on. So you can see here the index, this living planet index. What it is, it's an indicator of the status of global biodiversity. You can see it fell by 52%. So basically everything starts at one. And you can see that black line there is basically just dropping. Because basically we're making everything go extinct faster and faster and faster and faster. All right, moving up to page 279. So there's a thing called extirpation, which is a local extinction. All right. Now this can over time lead to full-blown extinction of the species, period. So rather than like, you know, they used to live here, now they don't, but there's still species around rather than they're not on Earth at all anymore. Now, the background extinction rate typically has been one species per every one or 10 million species. That's what it has been. And that's kind of honestly what we're shooting for it to be. There have been five mass extinction events in history, which are listed right there, all in order. Okay, the crustaceous period, that's the one that everybody's most common with because everybody basically thinks it's an asteroid. So everybody generally knows about that one, and that's the most recent one as well. The new mass extinction that we're causing right now is different. Not only, like I just said, is are we causing it, but we are going to suffer from it as a result. And that is unique from the past because basically, typically, it's not really something that certain species are doing to cause it. Like, we're literally making our own demise, unfortunately. All right, now this science behind the story, talking about why is wildlife declining in African reserves, is actually kind of an interesting topic, because one of the things we talk about a lot is, like, what we should do, we should make more reserves. But as you can see, the species are declining. Even those that are in the reserves, they are declining. Okay, you can see basically inside the refuge and outside the refuge. So the things that they've been thinking about and kind of their theories are listed up top here, which are kind of interesting because, again, still kind of human cause about this whole thing. So you can see settlements have increased as nomadic Maasai, or I think it's Maasai herders, have become more sedentary and as people have migrated from elsewhere. So the settlements are becoming bigger and bigger rather than having really small villages that can kind of move on a whim. They're more kind of putting roots down. You can see the farmers are converting the grasslands to crops. And this destroys the habitat for antelope, wildebeest, and the predators that follow them. The livestock are now competing with the wild grazing animals for food on the grasslands. And the local residents are killing animals for food for their own substance. While the criminal gang kill animals to export what's called bush meat. All right, so basically it's still, even though they're on the reserves, those things are still affecting those animals that are being protected on those reserves, unfortunately. Now going to page 283, make sure I'm on the screen here. You can see we are causing the sixth mass extinction event. Like I was just saying, everyone, everywhere human goes, did that say everyone human goes? That should say everywhere humans go, species go extinct. 
And that's what this is showing up here. If I zoom out just a little bit. Basically, it's showing humans showed up about 1,500 years ago. The lemurs, the elephant birds, and others go extinct. Okay, in South America, we show up about 10 to 15,000 years ago. 83% of the large mammals genre or genera, like genus and species, that's genus, those guys start going away. You can see in New Zealand, show up 1,000 years ago, we kill some things. Australia, 44, and so on. Basically, wherever we show up, things start going extinct. All right? So, habitat loss is the biggest threat. Yeah, you can see it destroys habitats for human use. Habitat fragmentation happens over time, typically. Now, there is these days, think of like a new development that's going in, you know, in Tacoma or University Place or Puyallup or wherever. They will basically make little parks. That's habitat fragmentation. Typically, this is an over time kind of thing. As the kind of the, the communities are kind of like developing over time, it happens. These days here in westernized nations, they do it more on purpose. All right. 285. So pollution, another big one, obviously. So we got air pollution, water pollution, noise pollution, light pollution, all of them cause, cause harm to organisms. We obviously got over harvesting tree species for fancy furniture. We got gorillas and primates for what's called bush meat. Again, kind of like the exotic meat that people will pay a premium price for. There's overfishing, there's poaching as well. Like this picture here, these are all of the elephant tusks that were seized in Kenya. Basically, they are literally about to burn them because they're trying to basically send a message that don't do this. It's not kind of worth anything. So we're taking it away from you so that way nobody profits from it, period. Okay, 287, we're talking about invasive species. Now, as populations change, an invasive species can move in and overtake an ecosystem. A big thing, a native species can never be considered invasive because if it's native to the area, it's not invasive, it's just out-competing things at that point. All right, another big thing, climate change. And I'm not gonna go, like really talk about this because we've talked about that thing enough, all right? And we're gonna dive into all those details. And that's basically it. Hey, check out a frog. <laughs> all righty, don't forget about the reading quiz.